Hello and welcome RC Team in the hangar. This will be the review to the, you read the title, iFlight Chimera 5, a 5 inch, but with a twist. I hope at the end of the video you know the difference between the Chimera 4, 5, 7 and between this Chimera 5 and your typical 5 inch drone. Hope you learned something today. <laughs> So full disclaimer at first, because this channel is about honesty, I requested, I, I reached out to iFlight, which actually an Austrian friend writes me back if I contact iFlight, it's nice. I contacted iFlight and told them, hey, I want to test your iFlight Camera 7, because I saw it and I think it's an awesome long range beast. And they came back to me and said, we want you to take a look at the Chimera, Chimera 5 first, because that's their newer product. They, of course, want to advertise for it. And I wasn't hesitant, because it looks really good from the specs as well. So I got this thing behind. We'll make a, a little unboxing now. So this is the collection of what you get directly in the box. Especially in our school. 50, 30, three bladed props. They are very lightweight, but they have this special hub with two holes. But it's not very common on five inches. So, five inches, but very, very lightweight. Standard cables, USB C and USB micro, battery, pads, velcro. And this is the alternative TPU cam mount, it's a GoPro compatible mount. I've seen this already on the Chimera 4, they give you good instructions how to set up the GPS rescue mode, so you don't... Okay, because it's not so common that the front motors are spinning outwards, which is better because grass is not thrown to the lens, but it's not the default motor direction, so they give you this warning. Some nice stickers, and this is from the Cutex. What I like about iFlight is that they have a ton of little hints. Do not power this up without an antenna. Your batteries should be centered. Hey, I'm an iFlight pre-tuned bind and fly. Just bind and fly. Means don't mess me up by changing all the pits before even trying me out. We know what we do. so. Be careful when changing parameters. This could occur in unexpected flight behavior. <laughs> yes, for sure. How to bind the crossfire if you have the crossfire version. Those motor bells look like rims of a fancy car. I mean, really fancy. <laughs> General, those motors, the Xing 2005. 2550kV motors, they look very high quality. Uh, crossfire antenna in front and not in the back. But yeah, iFlight learned because the Chimera 4 has the crossfire in the back. So they already changed this to the recommended position. This is supposed to be the Cadix Nebula Pro, the, the proper Cadix DJI cam, which I'm excited for. Neatly placed over the all-in-one stack is the Cadix Vista. Very, very tidy looking build. But why didn't they have more distance between the flight control and the Vista? Down there, that's the ESC and the flight control. They probably have a reason for this, but I don't understand it. Of course, there's a little capacitor for proper power filtering. and. Back there is a little buzzer with an own lipo. And in the back you have the GPS mounted. Quite far in the back, just on this TPU printed part. Uh, there would be space, you see still the space for the crossfire antenna. Very nice looking 3D printed part to house the crossfire receiver down there. The bind button is right next to the antenna connector. The shiny metal object with the black dot in the middle. 
For the front mount they had the receivers back there. So it's still the same part as before, but it's now in the front. Which is short cables, lesser chance of interference. Nice nice. This is my standard procedure how to upgrade the DJI Vista unit because it can get hot. Uh, I like I just like how I've like preset the OSD for me. So this is what is in the package of the Chimera 5. Additionally, I selected this as an option. Combined with this head strap, I think these goggles look fresh. Love them. 3000 milliamp 4S lithium ion now. It really only matters which cells are inside them. And this continuous discharge of 15 amps should be more than sufficient. Max charging 5 amps, but recommended 3 amps, which is 1C. I would go with this. And you see, you can go all the way to 2.5 with it. Yeah. Under the MA, you see VTC6. And I've often heard from guys in the comments that the VTC6 lithium ion cells, the round things in there, they are quite good. So, my highest hope for this. Then I also got some spare props because you never know and as I said they are special. I don't have other props that suit you. And I also got the additional GoPro thingy that you can order. I mean the mount, the green one. It looks cool, I have to admit. And they give you this uh, lens protector frame that you just pop on. Or the bit larger one that can also hold their ND filter. Uh, don't look at the center, but if you look at them, they are about the same density. So this is an ND16, which is the one that I use the most time. It looks a bit bulky, but it's also a good amount of protection. Those 650 cells with four cell yeah. flies with the 650s quite well. Uh, flies four minutes. And the funny thing is, this five inch also flies with those tiny batteries for like four minutes 30, <laughs> which is crazy. But you shouldn't fly something like that small because you can demand too much of them and then they get hot and not too well. So and it flew very satisfying. So you can use those packs, but you should use larger packs, like 1300 Ma or something like this, LiPos, for really a nice amount of punch. And then, thanks for shutting down. And these are the long range packs, lithium iron. It's quite windy today. As soon as they have some juice, I will go on the roof and fly some more because it's really exciting. It flies nice. Now I have, I charged like 1880 milliamps in this 3000 pack, so I will not fly it full range, but I can fly a bit with it. Okay, let's get it on. Already I can feel it's a bit, you feel the weight of course, I mean, my last flight I was ultra light, now I am to like standard weight. But as you can hear if I pass by, quite close. It's not intimidating loud. Very nice. You see on my shirt, you hear it maybe, it's windy. 
that don't feel a lot. We have a around five to eight amps. My standard core. Oh, and I need to reset the voltage beeper thingy because on that catch it already beeped. As you see, it can be flown quite fast. Oh, that was dangerous curve. And let's give it a land. At around 1000. Now we can charge the scale security. Three point six. Okay. Very nice flight. I'm already a big fan of this copter. And I've used a little over a thousand milliamps in six minutes and nineteen. Times three gives you what 18 minutes you can get anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes depending on how you fly after you unplug the battery you want to be quite fast with the little reset button on the beeper or else it beeps really loud on you and I like I skewed it a bit to the side to access it more easy the tunes are really great the tunes are great for either very light like the 650 are extremely light or for the heavy lithium-ion batteries, so that's yeah, just a do-it-all tune. It is prepared to carry a full-size GoPro. So this was the GoPro flight demo footage with the GoPro in super view mode. It feels a bit bulkier with the larger pack. I can imagine this thing being really fun without the additional weight of the GoPro and just a powerful battery. Then you can also do some acro flying. And nice morning sun. What more can you ask for? I was about to say maybe a satellite or two, but I already have ten, like one or two minutes later. So GPS acquisition, totally fine. It's so cool that I can pack everything I need for this long range mission into yeah, at least my backpack. But most of the gear already fits in this little pouch here. The Tango 2 little tip for safely storing them if you don't have a fancy 3d printed part just use some hankies as protection for your to be protected optics and never store them facing the sun of course but you know this let's head off into the future no into the distance <laughs>
exactly 15 minutes later. Comfortably warm, not hot, so that's okay. That's 3.2 per cell. You could push it some more, but you don't have a lot of reserves. If this is correct, we draw 2700 ma out of this 3000 pack in 15 minutes. But I covered a lot of distance and it was windy. So I'm totally fine with getting 15 minutes out of such a pack, knowing that you can stretch it to 20 minutes quite easily. But at the end, you don't have a lot of authority over the copter, so you really just can glide home, which is okay. The selling point for this thing, I guess, is the combination of being very lightweight, but still having a lot of authority in the air if it's gusty. So on a day like today, where it was quite windy, I wouldn't feel comfortable flying out far because it's all shaky and a lot of wind turbulences. So there is where the Chimera 4, you start to see the low weight and the four inches uh, fighting a bit. And here this thing, even if it sounds only marginally larger props and a bit more weight, this thing is really, it felt like a bigger copter in the air. I guess the problem with the 5 inch drone that is a niche drone is uh, it's just compared to other 5 inches on the market and yeah, too many guys of you will probably think I already have like 10 5 inch drones, <laughs> do I really need more? And this is something uh, different, so it's not your typical 5 inch drone, so you can do some sort of acro but it's also a really, really nice cruiser, which is very efficient. In the region of the Explorer, but the cool thing about this versus the Explorer, of course, is you have no props in view at all. Thanks a lot for watching. Check out this drone on the iFlight page. Leave me your questions in the comments. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. But anyhow, thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.